Hey, good day to you all. Welcome to today's Kingdom Conversation. I'm so blessed and privileged and always honored to have opportunity to come and speak about faith and life with each of you uh, during this broadcast. So today we have a question that was presented from one of our international connections uh, who were inquiring about <clears throat> excuse me, some of the living standards and pitfalls of living in America. Uh, as we know, many people from various countries try to make their way to one of the Western nations for various reasons, generally for economic reasons. And I often want to remind them that the grass is not always greener on the other side. From a distance, America may look like it's the haven or the place where everybody just prospers and everybody is um, financially stable and such. So I want to talk about some of the truths and some of the myths about the American dream. And for many Americans, it is simply a dream, not a reality. So I just want to give information to you as truthful as possible from my perspective and dealing with people who are native born Americans here, those who have migrated from various countries and some of the challenges that they may face. Now one of the key things I want to touch on off the bat is related to health care. One thing I noticed doing some research even of nations that are seemingly poor by some people's standards. They seem to have, for the most part, free health care, free health care for their residents and even some visitors in their country. This is one of the key things that you must be made aware of about America. There is no free health care, except for those who are on special government programs due to low income or disabilities and things as such. But the average American citizen who's healthy and trying to work and make a living and sustain life, there is no free health care. You have to have insurance or as I mentioned, some type of government, special government program due to uh, low income or disability or something of that nature. And so it's not that's one of the things that I think is surprising to many people because America presents itself as the richest nation on the earth and it doesn't even provide free health care for its citizens. And I know the reasons for that is because the insurance companies and the health care system makes big profit off of people's health care. So that's one of the things you need to be made aware of. If you happen to get ill or sick and you don't have any type of insurance, then the health care costs will set you back a lot. I'm not sure people can actually refuse you treatment, but the bills will accumulate and will affect your ability to rent houses, purchase things if your credit record is, is damaged as a result of being delinquent with the medical bills. Uh, second, we do offer free public school education for grade school children through from kindergarten through high school. That is generally paid for by the government from the local communities, local counties and cities in America. So that's health care and that's education. Next thing is housing. Housing is even by American standards, becoming almost unaffordable for the average American. A lot of corporations have purchased large swaths of properties and are leasing properties at exorbitant rent. Many people, unfortunately, as it is in many countries, simply cannot afford the housing costs. Some are trying to live with others, which that's kind of not the American way. People are not used to having to live with other people because the society in general is pretty much individualistic. Uh, but many people are waking up to the realities that you may not be able to do things uh, on your own. Now that's the general American culture for people who are born and raised here. 
um, not someone who migrated from other places because I find that other people from, have migrated in, they have a stronger sense of family structure. But if you happen to move to America by yourself without some type of family structure or support system around you, uh, it can be difficult just listening to some migrants that I know who immigrated here to America. Uh, generally speaking, they live in large cities, which will allow you the opportunity to have public transportation, buses, trains, subways, things as such to be able to get around the city. Uh, very rarely do I come across people from other nations, unless they are part of a family group, who move to the small towns or rural areas. Uh, of course, with the cities come more crime, come more homelessness, um, and things as such. Uh, maybe a lesser quality of lifestyle, depending on what you're used to. Um, so you have to consider that as you coming to America. And, unfor and also, employment. Um, most of the average American I'm talking about, not those who are making larger incomes, but they say the average American trying to say if you have a family, wife, children, you're trying to own a home or rent a home, have a decent way of transportation, activities for the kids, groceries, food, utilities, the, the normal household bills. Um, a lot of Americans work two or three jobs to sometimes because they're trying to live above their means, other times because they simply are trying to afford the place they live and that takes up a large chunk of their income. So we, you have to think about um, the American dream is, is built on a lot of sweat effort by the average American person. Uh, and so I want to give you a clear view or picture from my perspective and not just my personal perspective, but also by my interaction with others who have migrated here, who have shared some of their struggles and challenges that they faced. And one of the things that I heard frequently, particularly from those who moved here without a family structure, is the loneliness. Because a lot of Americans, a lot of people in Western societies, based on scientific studies recently, uh, loneliness seemed to be a big issue. And this is one of the reasons why social media is so prevalent because people can reach out and connect with people, even, whether it's virtually or not. This is where our world is becoming increasingly more virtual. Virtual uh, church services, virtual weddings, virtual dating. Uh, this is just the way of the present and the future. I don't see that genie going back in the bottle. And so we need to find balance with that, try to form uh, what I call actual real life connections with people locally as much as possible. A lot of times that may be done through a uh, belonging to a local church or being part of a social group or a club where you can interact with other people. And there's nothing wrong per se about connecting virtually with people, a lot of good, meaningful connections that would not otherwise be possible can be made that way. But we need to have balance like a seesaw on both sides of it. But unfortunately, it does appear that the virtual, quote unquote, reality is becoming more of the reality than actual real life in person connections and communications. So again, there are two sides to that coin. Some can be good, some can be bad per se, uh, but you must find balance in your life uh, by having good connections with people in person, as well as maintaining and reaching out to new cultures. And I know I use the internet quite often to communicate with people in other nations that I would not otherwise have had the privilege of connecting and communicating with and have actually developed some deep, meaningful uh, friendships and relationships with those individuals. So it's not all bad, but I just suggest and that you also look at establishing, it doesn't have to be a large group of people, but at least two or three people that you can communicate with and form a community 
or a village, so to speak. So uh, we try to develop a physical village uh, as a model property um, that we have in Paradise Village that we call it. And we also have virtual villages that we build online through uh, virtual groups, virtual sale groups for people who are outside of the local area but are still connected through our school, through our cell churches, through our ministry of fellowship. So these are something, things that are global, but particularly the things I touched on, and feel free to reach out to me, contact me if you have any questions that I did not address uh, for you. It's first, healthcare. It's no free healthcare in America, so that's for those on special government programs, low income, disabilities, and such, or elderly beyond the age 65, I think, and such. Uh, but the average working adult uh, person, you have to have insurance or pay out of pocket for your health care. Uh, I think I touched on uh, education, that there is free public school education for children from kindergarten to 12th grade, which is the grade for high school. And um, I touched about housing, housing costs are really starting to get out of control, not just in America, but from what I understand in many other nations as well, many other what we call quote unquote developed nations are starting to see some of the birth pains of our societies. I was listening at a broadcast in Greece about the unemployment and they're trying to privatize their healthcare system um, where they can make profit instead of just being a government sponsored program. People are protesting that, and so we can look in lots of countries, in America is not much different. We may not have reached some of the crisis stages that other nations have already reached and dealt with, but the problem is, 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 is growing. The discontent is growing even here in America, because we the picture I believe that's painted for others in other nations is that America and UK, France, Italy, any Western society is the place you want to be and I understand some of the reasons why that may be the case uh, because we get floods of migrants trying to risk their lives and everything to come to America and I'm very sympathetic toward those causes there's a great political debate that's happening here in America around this very issue even as we speak um, people want others to go through legalized processes but it takes months and years in some cases for that to play out if you get approved uh, others are just uh, finding ways to sneak in to america so it's uh, the earth belongs to everyone i understand governments try to maintain a certain amount of order and laws uh, but I, we also must be human we must be human with each other and do the best we can to accommodate as many people as we can who are legitimately seeking uh, refuge in America because America is pretty much built on a immigrant society. Of course, the Native Americans who were here, uh, they're, they're generally not play big, they generally do not play big roles in American society today. So those who colonized America, just as others colonized nations all around the world generally if they colonized africa uh the british the portuguese french the belgians the germans then those leave lasting impacts and the same is true in america where the french and the spanish and the english uh, came and colonized america as we know it from its original time and so now that America is pretty much populated by people who transported here from other places, including the, what we call the African Americans who were brought here on slave ships from the continent of Africa. So they're not, most of the people who are in America were not original from America. Uh, that's, that's one of the real interesting facts that I think a lot of people need to be made aware of. But I, I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity and I'm thankful for the, um, the chances that I've been having much more lately to communicate with people who live in other nations, in Ethiopia, Kenya, Norway, Australia, Uganda, uh, South Africa, 
so many other you know, UK, United Kingdom. And there are so many other places that I'm listening to some of the issues that people are facing or struggling with, including relationships. I meet a lot of single people uh, who are clinging for, to the hope of having good, close relationships, marriage relationships and such. Some are looking for better opportunities for their children. And so, we, we, we again, our priority toward one another should always be to be human toward one another. For God is not a respect of persons based on race, sex, gender, social economic status, nationality, ethnic groups, and things as such. Particularly for those of us who are in Christ, then we certainly have an example that God is not a respect of persons. And so we need to always, as I frame it, be human with one another. And um, and do the best we can to assist and be good global citizens. We have to share this earth together, whether we like it or not. So let's do the, our best to make life equal, balanced, and fair for everybody. Everybody may not have the same standard of living, but my belief and philosophy is that no one should go below a certain basic level. Every person is entitled to food, clothing, and shelter. And it's great if they can have some type of occupation to keep themselves productive in life uh, as well. The Sanskrit scriptures say if you're able to work and you don't work, then you, you shouldn't eat. So let's do our level best to create opportunities for others to be hospitable toward others to give aid and care and consideration to others who may be going through various situations in their life around the areas that I mentioned to you. So that's kind of a, just a snapshot of some of the key areas, key institutions in America. And I didn't even touch on religion or the church. Uh, of course, we are melting pot as it comes to religion and people of all faiths reside here in America, and generally speaking, we respect each other's beliefs, and you have a right to practice your your religious uh, beliefs and practices uh, in any way that you choose, as long as it's not violating any loyal, uh, legal or moral laws by American standards. Uh, so that's just a snapshot. If I missed any areas that you have questions about, please do feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll be more than happy to try to address your questions. And hopefully today's conversation has been somewhat of a help to those of you who have asked these questions. And again, I'll be more than happy to follow up with you for any other additional areas that I did not touch on that may be of interest to you. Oh, and before I leave, there was an important point I wanted to make about crime. Yes, America has a crime problem. Most major cities really have struggled with uh, gun violence. It's one of the major forms of crimes that happens here frequently, daily. Even mass shootings, as we call them here in schools, churches, marketplace, just common crime in the areas that not to also include car thefts, burglaries, rapes, assaults. So yes, America, uh, because everyone for the most part has a gun or multiple guns, even youth and criminals makes American society very unsafe. So that's something that you also must be made aware of as you consider uh, life here in America. So life is not all good and of course life is not all bad. But we want to give you a snapshot of some of the realities of what life is like here in America. It is not just a bowl of cherries. The grass is not always green here. We have problems and struggles just like every other nation do. But I pray that you will find this information helpful. And I look forward to addressing more things for you in the future. But as believers and followers of Christ, we certainly know the mandate that we have is to be human toward one another. Uh, we must be accommodating, accommodating toward each other, following the example that Christ has given us. So may the Spirit of God be upon you. Hopefully this information has helped you. 
If there's anything else that I did not touch on that you would like for me to address with you with a follow-up, either directly or not, you can reach me at my ministry website, um, Amazing Grace Ministries, www.agministries.net. Leave a contact there or visit our Facebook page as well or leave a note in the YouTube video comment section. May God bless and prosper you, children of God. Bless you and bless you as we be a blessing to others. Amen. You've been listening to Kingdom Conversations with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned into today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.